This is a 10 MHz oscillator with two series connected crystal filters, one here and one here. Uh, the idea of having two crystal filters in series is to get a steeper derivative of phase versus frequency and that should improve sideband noise. But before actually using both filters, I want to have good performance while using only one filter. So I have the signal here, the feedback output, uh, connected here and run this as an oscillator. And I made several videos with this thing and I have had problems with occasional noise bursts. And it has been very difficult but Finally, I have located the problems. It is capacitors, maybe this one, but certainly these ones. And I will show what the problem is first. Here is one of the two LC series resonators on the output. A coil and 100 PF uh, fixed and a tunable capacitor, I think it was 45 PF. This looks very nice, gold plated, Teflon insulated, looks very stable and nice, but it isn't. I think the reason is that Teflon is piezoelectric, so occasional movements in the plastic will create noise bursts. That's the explanation I can come up with. And uh, anyway, I have removed these and things have become much better. The solution I have come up with is to use fixed capacitors and variable inductances. And I have found these cores in my junk box. It's a ceramic cores with a tuning slug of copper. And it is mechanically very stable. Uh, I can fasten with this nut so the uh, tuning copper is very well fixed. And I have made coils uh, with about the same number of turns as I had before and a fixed capacitor. And this has solved the noise burst problem. This is what I have now, uh, a serious resonator here to set a suitable, suitable reactance to make the noise minimum uh, at wide separations. And then uh, these are the tuning inductors here and here and this one. There is still a conventional trimmer capacitor here. But the Q is very low of this resonator and this is not Teflon, it's a more uh, standard simple thing which seems to be perfectly okay. Here is the phase noise. Uh, I have two 10 MHz oscillators as references and uh, Measurement of the test object, this oscillator, with one of them, channel 2 in red, is much more noisy than channel 1, which is in green. And the yellow trace is the correlation spectrum between these two. And I can see a very close to the carrier, 0.1 Hz, uh, there is no difference between the yellow and the green, or a very small difference. This means that all the noise comes from my test object while the channel 1 reference is significantly better because uh, the green curve is the sum of the noise of the oscillator and the reference and the red is the sum of the uh, test object and the channel 2 reference oscillator and here the sum differs not from the signal from the reference oscillator. It means that the 
channel 1 oscillator is much better than both channel 2 and the test object. Here the green curve bends and I don't know the reason whether it is the oscillator or whether it is something related to the hardware. The level where this happens at 1 Hz offset this is minus 118 dBc per Hz while the oscillator is close to 124, well maybe 123 would be correct to say. It is easier to see on a linear scale. First you can see here the noise. I don't see any noise bursts. Not until right now. You can see here. When I'm now sitting at the table and making vibrations and that destroys. But this measurement has been running for 34 hours. So this will not affect the result if I am quick to take it down now. So I want to read 0.1 Hertz. The yellow trace is 80.7 and the green is 80.1. And the red is high above and that doesn't matter exactly where it is. 0.2 Hertz. The yellow is 95.3. And the green is 93.4. And 0.5 Hertz. The yellow here is minus 112. And the green is minus 108.5. And, and the red here is at minus 97. I have these values for the device under test, correlation spectra, and uh, for channel 1 reference oscillator plus the device under test, that was the green curve, and 97 decibels at 0.5 Hz for the device under test plus the channel 2 reference oscillator. Uh, at 0.5 Hz, there was a 3.8 dB difference between this and that. 3.8 dB, that is 2.4 times. That means that the device under test is one unit of uh, noise, while channel 1 reference oscillator is 1.4. And that gives me uh, the reference oscillator at channel 1 at minus 109.9 uh, and the channel 2 it was at channel 2 minus 97 uh, and the device under test minus 112 so the difference there is 15.3 decibels and that is uh, so much that I don't want to include it, including the considering the uncertainty, the noise. So the level of channel 2 is minus 97 at uh, 0 0.5 Hz. And at 0.1 Hz, uh, the difference is very small, 0 0.6 dB, that is 1.15 times only. So that means that the a device under test is 1 and the noise of channel 1 is only 0.15 that is 8.2 decibels so it means that the noise of channel 1 reference oscillator should be minus 88.3 now this is very uncertain because this difference is so small that it's not really significant I just wanted to show with this that one can get the noise of the reference oscillators by subtracting the noise of the correlated spectrum. Before I start to work with the oscillator, which isn't so good, the channel 2, which is very noisy as you see here, uh, I am 
modifying the software, the Linrad program, to make it a little better for this purpose. I have improved the computation capacity by splitting the software into more threads. Uh, and I run this now for 51 hours. So this is the logarithmic plot of the oscillator that I will work with after having fixed this one. Uh, but you can see here, uh, the noise here looks very much like a random noise. There are no uh, occurrences of instabilities that I had so many problems with for so long time. So this uh, replacement of the uh, Teflon trimmers with uh, stable inductors that can be tuned has been very successful. I will take down the data points. They are a little bit uncertain here above, let's say, 30 hertz, but they are accurate, I think, within better than two decibels, probably better than one decibel. I tried to go on the medium line here. So at one and a half kilohertz, which is the last point, uh, I am at minus 181 dBc per hertz, or close to that. Here is the result. I have plotted the 1 over F3 line here. And as you see, uh, my oscillator starts to deviate significantly below about 1 hertz. And it has some 10 decibels too much noise at 0.1 hertz. I think I know the reason for this, and that is that I use a lot of field effect transistors, and they have a capacitance that varies with the voltage. And the voltage isn't quite stable. And the reason is the 1 over F noise in the current. Because I have a RC filter with a large resistor and a big capacitor, but still the voltage varies in this 0.1 hertz uh, time scale. I can see that on a precision voltmeter. So I will do some changes and try to make the frequency independent of the voltage. And I hope to be able to bring down this. Uh, but before that I will do further work with the software because that is going to save time in the long run. This is about the OCXO8607. Ten times better than any other oven controlled crystal oscillator. The long time stability is of course much better than what I can obtain. Uh, but when I look at the phase noise at 1 Hz, 10 Hz, 100 Hz, and the best they can offer is option L, 10 MHz, and I will plot these data points on my graph. Here is the BVA8607B, option L, and it is not at all as steep as my oscillator here at 1 Hz, where they cross each other almost. So my noise floor is much lower, 35 decibels approximately at 1 kilohertz, but at 0.1 hertz uh, the BVA is probably much better than my oscillator at the present state of it. Here is the phase noise again, and this is the amplitude noise. And as you can see, here I really see the amplitude noise, but down here I don't see it. It is below the measurable threshold. It means that the red dots here, the imaginary part, are equally strong as the real part. Here I compare phase noise, amplitude noise. The correlation between them is very small, probably zero, but when there is only noise, there is a lot of noise in the correlation computation. It has no value. 
and the last screen here is amplitude noise and phase noise and of course at the noise floor here amplitude noise and phase noise are at the same level because it's uncorrelated to the carrier <laughs> 